you are watching Well of the Fathers. Well of the Fathers property channel, like I always tell you, is a channel that is designed uh, to make pastures available for the saint and then to groom the saint to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Therefore, Father, we thank you this morning. We honor you. We give you praise. We thank you for your word that is, you know, coming for this morning. I pray that the entrance of this word will bring light to God. Your word will be glorified in our lives, even as it was glorified in the life of the saints who were before us. We thank you. Shine forth your face upon us, O oh God. Shine forth. My face, Satan, of a higher, bring us to the place of intimacy, a place of communion and oneness with you. We give you praise. In Yeshua's name we pray. Hallelujah. Welcome once again. Uh, we have been sharing on the mandate of fruitfulness. Praise God. The matter of fruitfulness. It's very interesting for us to know that Yahweh commanded man to be fruitful. God wants us to be fruitful. There is a mandate upon us, the mandate of fruitfulness. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 precisely, and the Bible said, God created man in his own image after his likeness. After his likeness. Then, that's what it says, and God blessed them. So also, that word, and God blessed them, and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, live Pledge the earth, my God. Now, fruitfulness is a command of God upon a man. But you see, before that, he said, God blessed him. What does that mean? It means that God empowered man to be fruitful. God equipped man to be fruitful. So you can't be fruitful until God equips you. You can't be fruitful until you are empowered for it. Now, don't forget, man was created in the image of God. That means that man carries the substance of God. Man carries the life of God within him. You could see the fruitfulness of Adam in the Eden. Adam was fruitful. Adam had the capacity to name the creations of God. Wow, that's great exploit. Now, but you see, after the fall, man lacked the ability to be fruitful as God expected in the dimensions of God. Now remember when man face said that you will labor, you will eat from the sweat of thy brow. But you see, the good news right now is that God has blessed us in the New Testament. How Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Blessed be the Lord God, who has blessed us. My God, I love this scripture so much. Who has blessed us? So we are not a being looking for the blessing. You are not a being trying to be blessed. Now, <laughs> the issue of blessing is God concerned for us. Now, check the scripture. Have you ever seen where Abraham was asking God for blessing? No. It was God keep saying, in blessing, I will bless you. Now, because your blessing is more profitable to God even than to you yourself, but you don't know that. That's why your fruitfulness is a key. Your fruitfulness is so important to God. In Deuteronomy, he said that uh, you should not forget the Lord your God, for it is seen that given thee the power to make wealth so that he will establish his covenant upon the earth. So God is in the business of establishing his covenant upon the earth. He's in the business. So my fruitfulness, your fruitfulness, they are uh, contributing for the advancement of the covenant of God, of what God intended to do upon the earth. So we are to replenish the earth. We are to landscape the earth. Praise God. That's why when Yeshua was here, his consign, what he came for, is to make the earth fruitful. Is to make the earth fruitful. That's why I say, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. We want to make the earth in heaven. 
We want to landscape the earth. When I talk about landscaping and uh, replenishing the earth, it is not just walking far from heaven. It is an assignment given to man by God. So it won't fall from heaven. It will flow from man to the earth. So that's why God, that's why we have been empowered by God for that assignment. We have been empowered by God to be fruitful. We have put on Christ. All the blessings of God, they are ye and amen, and they are in Christ. So as you have received God, Christ, in your life, you are putting that blessing, you have been empowered to be fruitful. So fruitfulness is not even a choice to you. It's not something you joke with. Fruitfulness is a command. Fruitfulness is what must be traced in you. It is what must seem all around you. Fruitfulness. So we are commanded. Hallelujah. Every part of you, every part of your life, in all that you do, we have to be fruitful. In Psalm 92, he said, the right church shall flourish like a palm tree. Let's look at the palm tree. Palm tree is a, a tree that everything in it is useful. It's useful. Everything in you, my God, David said to Solomon, that you may prosper in wheresoever you go and in whatsoever you do. So the fruitfulness it should be integral to you. Is a part of you. He shall grow like a cedar in the Lebanon. That is what interests me. How does a cedar grow? How does a cedar grow? A cedar doesn't grow upward first. When you plant a cedar seed, what happens? It begins to grow downward first. I want to say this, that the growth of every saint is actually downward first and then upward. So we don't grow upward first. We grow that word first. Yeshua says something. He said that he that hear my word is like a man who is building a house. It is you that is that house. It is you that is that house that has been built. You know, I have shared this my dream some years ago, 1997, when I was in the, uh, when I got saved, the Lord said, build me a temple a fruitful temple that worship will go on 24 hours. Wow! I was like, I was thinking that. How do I build a cathedral where worship goes on 24 hours? Does it mean that people will not go to work? I kept thinking about that. I said, God says it is your work. I will do that. Praise God. So I go around telling people, I'm going to build a cathedral that worship will be going on 24 hours. 2007, I get that is 10 years after, the Lord spoke to me, built me a people as a temple that worship will go on 24 hours. I said, wow, Lord, is that what you, you said? So the people are the temple. You know, Apostle Paul said, ye are the temple of God. My God, I began to say, wow, I've gotten the revelation. 2017, the interpretation of this dream comes 10 years. It's 10 years, 2017. I was uh, sitting in, in front of the church. The Lord said, what about the house? What about the temple I asked you to build? He said, you are that temple. Build yourself. Wow, I screamed. So I need to build myself first. Hallelujah. So I have the house that Yeshua was referring to. He that will build, he must, in the look at Christ, he said, we have to dig, dig, and lay the foundation. So the foundation of my life must be left on the rock, and yes, is a rock. I will build my church upon this rock. I will build my church, and the gate of hell is not prevail against it. Now, one thing about Sida is that circumstances does not affect Sida. Climate changes does not affect it. That is one of the characteristics. Sida is durable, is strong. Wind does not affect it. Nothing affected. That's why Yeshua said, Hallelujah, that house, when storm comes, when flood comes, when rain comes, it would affect it because it was founded upon the rock. But you see, he that heareth the word and does not practice the word is like a man building on the sand. That sound like a, a believer who just got saved. He wants to grow rapidly, grow upward without thinking of that word. That's why they can't resist situation they can resist circumstances let the psalmist talk about the righteous he said a man you know that meditate upon the word is like 
uh, a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in this season. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, he shall flourish. That means he shall bring forth fruit. But on God they are not so, because they do not understand the principles of digging deep in the word of God, laying their life on the foundation. I stand here this morning to cancel you, to enjoy you to dig deep, spend time with God, spend time in fellowship, spend time doing intimacy, walk with the Lord, take your root downward that you bring forth fruit upward. It was Ezekiel that said that the inhabitant of the house of Judah, they will take their root downward and bring forth fruit upward. What are you building? What is it? They all, in the psalmist said, they are good and also they are like chaff, the wind blows away. When you are not rooted, challenges will beat you down. When you are not rooted, circumstances, you wouldn't stand fame. You will not stand fame. Take time to build your life on the integrity of God's word. You are not under competition. The greatest tragedy or the tragedy of a man is to just to live and be thinking of what to eat and what to wear. So your life revolves all around what to eat and what to wear. That's not life. That's why Yeshua said, take note of what to eat and what to wear. These are what the Gentiles take after. So the Gentile program is set on what to eat and what to wear. So our agenda, our purpose in life is beyond that. So we're building something that will last for eternity. Like I said, and you see, if you want to build something that will last four months, just plant a corn. On that four months, you have vested and eaten, and everything is gone. But when you follow cedar, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, 150 years, 250, is still bringing forth fruit. Hallelujah. So Paul says something in the book of Colossians chapter 1. From verse 10, I desire to be filled with the knowledge of his way, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful. So you have to be fruitful when you are empowered by God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Increasing day by day. Make sure you're growing. Make sure you're increasing. You shall grow like a cedar. Cedar take root that wall. It grows. It takes the, 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 the root of, of cedar from where its planet can be kilometers. It takes root that wall. It takes root that wall. Be like a cedar saying. That is how the Bible describes their growth. They are planted in the house. So you have to be planted. You have to be connected to God. Planted in the house of God. So don't joke with your devotion. Don't joke with your uh, spiritual activities. Advance it. Advance your spiritual activities. Hang around the word of God day by day. Meditate. Build intimacy. Build relationship with God. And keep constant fellowship with fathom believers. That's what it does in the life of the saint. You are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You are like the cedar that takes root downward. Don't be a shallow Christian. Don't be a shallow Christian. Don't be a shallow Christian. Yes, was, you know, in the book of, I think Proverbs, Paul, you know, sorry, Solomon said that, 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 that uh, a house is built by wisdom by knowledge and understanding. That's why you cannot be established without understanding. A house is built by wisdom and is established by understanding and the bed and broken and filled up by knowledge. So you need to be established without understanding on the establishment. That's why you have to stay on God's word until you have been established. As of Apostle chapter 20, verse 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you to build you and establish you and give you inheritance among them that are sanctified. So those that are sanctified, they already have an inheritance. So God is bringing you to inheritance. Hallelujah. He's bringing you to inheritance. So you need God's knowledge. You need fellowship with the Spirit of God to be fruitful. You need that. 
You need prayer, custom, Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15, Paul says, Since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. Verse 16, I cease not to pray for you, making mention of you in my prayer that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge. Now, all of these components are fully established because a house is built by wisdom. Established by understanding and the depth that fill up by knowledge. That's why Paul was praying, These are for a builder that you may bring, up, bring forth fruit. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling. You are called to replenish the earth. You are called to landscape the earth with the life of Christ, to make the earth heaven. Like Yeshua said, as it is in heaven, let it be here on earth. That man dead is resting upon you and I. It's a man dead that is resting upon Adam. That thing, the glory of God that will come on earth, will fall from heaven. It will flow from you and I. Yeshua said in John chapter 7, from the, you know, chapter 7, you know, as the scripture said, take the scripture said. Out of him that believe, uh, uh, from his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I have learned to pay attention when Yeshua said, as the scripture said, where did the scripture say that? If you read scripture, listen, you, you won't see that. But understanding will show that it was in Ezekiel. We had the temple, that river, waters flow from that temple and fill the earth. Wheresoever it flows, it makes it alive. There's something that has to flow from us to make the earth fruitful, to make your home fruitful, to make your life fruitful, to make your environment fruitful. The mandate of fruitfulness is upon you. You don't have to live casually. You don't have to live carelessly. You need to pay attention because the mandate of fruitfulness is upon you. Hallelujah. It's upon you. I pray for you. You will never be unfruitful. You will never be unfruitful. You will never be unfruitful. In 2 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 1, we're going to say grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. My God, as he said, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Verse 1 says, Yet by giving to us these precious promises by this, we are partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, having escaped, as I say, now giving, you know, uh, 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 add to this. Hallelujah. Praise God. Giving to this, add to this. Uh, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, temperance to temperance, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness to brotherly kindness, love. He said, If these things are in you and about, and you will harness these things in the place of the word of God. If these things are in you and abound, they will make you that you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. So if I'm fruitful, it means that these virtues are, have not been inculcated inside of me. They are not there. I'm not taking root that one. They make you that you will not be fruitful or barren in the north. He that lacked these things is blind and cannot see afar. And come the point that he has forgotten that he has been purged from his sin. Verse 10 says, uh, uh, Do all diligence to make your call and election sure. If you do these things, my God, he said, you will never fail. Then, verse 11 says, An entrance will be, will be given to you into the everlasting kingdom of God. Verse 12 says, I will not be negligent. To remind you of this thing, do you know them and establish in this present truth? The present truth is that the blessing for fruitfulness is upon you. The blessing for fruitfulness is upon you. So God deposited, gave blessings in you, and will give account of those things. Like Yeshua gave five talent, He gave someone five, gave someone two, gave someone one, and there must be a day of reckoning. But you see, the person giving five, what happened to his five? He multiplied, the man was fruitful. The man giving two, multiplied, the man was fruitful. But you see, the man giving one, the ground hid it. He said, you are a hard man. And this is how we are. When you are not transacting with the giftings of God, with the thing that God planted in you, you are like that man. And you are fruitful. Because Yeshua, he said, you would have, you know, 
giving it out so that it will be multiplying. So he assured man does to be fruitful. God wants you to, to increase. So I pray for you that the blessing of fruitfulness is resting upon you. If there's any way that your life has not been fruitful, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I resist the power that is making you unfruitful. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the blessing, fruitfulness upon your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.